Well, we have a segment of this video that all truck drivers find interesting because it's the number one topic of discussion uh, on all trucking groups, no matter where you go. Uh, trucker talk radio, online, videos, radio, just everything. Drivers are always talking about personal conveyance. And uh, so you, if you don't know what personal conveyance is, for those of you that aren't drivers, a driver is on a clock. He pushes a button in the morning, sets off that clock, and he has to finish driving. He can drive for 11 hours. It's more complicated than that, but that's the easy part of it. <clears throat> um, personal conveyance is where he can uh, stop that clock and go to lunch while he's driving and then come back and then continue on. Like if he wants to go to Walmart, if he's at a truck stop, if he wants to go to Walmart or if he wants to go to a hotel, he can do that and be officially off the clock. So in a nutshell, what happened to us, and the reason I'm even bringing this up is because it happened to us and we data queued it and I'll let you know at the end of the video what happened. We'll start out by saying, uh, here's what the ruling says on the FMCSA website. And I'm going to read it right off of the website. Uh, and it's the uh, segment that we're going to be talking about. And that is 395.8. The second one down, meaning the second question, the second reason that you can use personal conveyance. It says, and I'm going to be reading, so sorry about that, uh, commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence between trailer drops and the driver's residence and between work sites and his or her residence. In those scenarios, the commuting distance combined with the release from work and the work to start times must allow the driver enough time to obtain required rest so he is not fatigued. It's just a lot of jargon, but it's saying that the way that I interpret that is after he's done with the delivery, uh, he can go to his home or his residence um, on personal conveyance. Do you agree or not agree? Most people agree with that. And here at Travel Loco, we allow that. We allow people personal conveyance uh, one hour a day that can be used for whatever they want as long as they're within the law. And uh, But if a guy's going home, he can use personal conveyance to go home. And that's okay. We've always done that. Even if it's longer than an hour, if he's going to go home, it doesn't really make a difference. So here's the scenario. Let's move to this computer. Our driver, he drove from, uh, he got off at Orlando, in Orlando, Florida, dropped his drop there, and wanted to go home in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It's quite a distance, but that's okay with us for him. He had enough hours to make it all the way home, so he drove like to Ozark, Alabama, and he ran out of hours. He stopped and he took his break, and the next morning he got up and did PC all the way home to Tuscaloosa, which was only a couple hours from there, and he got a violation from that. Alabama doesn't have a lot of scales, okay? But every once in a while, they'll put up a scale in a sneaky place, and you have to pull over, and it's a portable scale. So he pulled over there, and they uh, uh, did a, an inspection on him, and they looked at his logs, and he got a violation for going on personal conveyance for that. So. We didn't think that was right because he was going home. He was going to spend the weekend at home. This was Halloween weekend, so he was going to be with his family for 
Halloween. Not that that's a big holiday or anything, but he was going to be home that weekend. So, no matter what, the driver, of course, beg, begged and pleaded because nobody wants that on their record that they get a violation for that. So he called our logging department and said, hey, you know, why did I get this ticket? I think we should data queue it. So our logging guy called me and he said the same thing. He said, Jack, we can, we can try to beat this. So we did a data queue on it. And for those of you who don't know what data queue is, it's not a hostess treat or something. It's a, um, here, I'll show it to you. This is what a, and, and at the, this is the actual data queue that he did. Um, and here's what the guy, oh man, I messed that up. There we go. The driver completed his delivery in Orlando, Florida and, and subsequently began his journey home to Tuscaloosa, like I explained to you, aiming to spend the weekend with his family. This occurred and yes, he fulfilled his necessary reset requirements. During his trip home, the driver did not have any cargo because he was empty, so he could do that. It is crucial that according to the FMCSA website, which I already read, he said it was 0.7, but I thought it was 0.2. Uh, okay, seven, that, that even applies to it more. Seven, authorized use of a CMV to travel home after working at a location. So James, the guy that did this, said the right thing. He wrote this all up nicely in a data queue. And uh, the data queue came back negative, meaning that the, the officer said, no, I'm going to stick with what I did. He should not be using personal conveyance to go home. We do not allow that. Yet, it says that clearly right here, <coughs> authorized use of a commercial vehicle to travel home after working at an off-site location. To me, that means in plain, clear English that when you're done, you don't have a dispatch, you don't have any loads on you, you're done for the weekend, you can go home on personal conveyance. But the officer said no. Well, James, he can be a little bit stubborn and that's why he does his jobs really good. Uh, don't try to win an argument with him. He's, he, he tried a double data queue, which means that you can counter back and say, hey, you know, tell them this whole story again, maybe point out some different things as to why we should win the data queue. But the officer said no, so period, that's done. I don't know if there's any more appeals that we can make to it, but nonetheless, we're stuck with that. What do you guys think? And some of you are going to say, well, Technically, he should have driven all the way back to Orlando. And if he would have got a load there, he could have done that round trip on personal conveyance. I'll bet you were thinking of that. And, I, and if it was a smaller area, you could say that. But he had plenty of rest, plenty of uh, time to relax with his family, but he still got a ticket. And that's just, it drags us all down into the dumps, you know. 
And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of stories like this that drivers across the country, and you guys in Europe too, you send me stories like this too, that it's even worse there. So I can't even imagine what it's like there. And Australia, you guys too, you send me all kind of messages like this. Here's what I think would be a good solution. Perhaps, of course, an officer is going to defend his record and say, okay, we, we get it. You know, uh, I'm going to stand with what I said. I'm not going to change my mind. Well, what if there was a third party involved? Maybe someone from a different office. Maybe his superior. I don't want to create another whole layer of, of DOT officers, but if, if you had some checks and balances uh, going on, then one officer couldn't dictate what he wrote. You would, you would have to have two officers that agree or disagree. And I know there's a lot of DOT officers that watch this show. What do you say? Are we wrong? Why, if we're wrong, why don't you call the FMCSA and say, hey, let's change the web, website so it doesn't say authorized of a commercial vehicle to go home after a delivery. Change that, please do. <sighs> now on to the next segment. Sorry this was a little bit wordy, but that's just how it was today. Let's see what's happening. project I'm doing today. I'm uh, making a dispatch board. I haven't made one of these in probably 30 years, but this is how they used to be made in the olden days. You'd take a piece of wood, you'd saw some uh, slots in it, and then you could take your dispatch card and put it in the slot. That way you could see all your drivers all at once. So. I am actually making one of those right now. Um, you know why? Because it may seem old school to you, but it works. The older methods uh, work better in some regard than the newer computerized one. As you know, I'm not against computers, so don't don't accuse me of that. But I'm also old school. I like uh, having. Uh, the ability to see where the drivers are. Like if I have something that needs to be picked up or something, I want to have that card there that I can see it instantly. I don't use that dispatch board for actual dispatching. I use it to keep track of things that I need to keep track of. Like this trailer is at this repair company. This trailer over here needs to be picked up, etc., etc. But it's the same concept as a dispatch board. Well, I have a meeting to go to now with uh, some insurance folks, and then we'll go to lunch, and we might even take you with us to lunch. So let's get this over with, and then we'll see what's on the chopping block for the rest of the day. Good morning. a great insurance meeting and I'm gonna go to Bucky's now so as you know some of you know there's a new Bucky's here in Calhoun Georgia 
and Bucky's is the latest thing on the interstate. Unfortunately, truckers can't go to Bucky's, but those of us in a regular four-wheeler can go to Bucky's. So let's go and see what they got for a sandwich for lunch, and then we'll come back. having a quick lunch here did you ever think there would be a day where you'd go into a place like this and the sandwich would be ten dollars I never thought that ten dollars for this barbecue sandwich it's worth it it's it's a great it's the best barbecue I've ever had in my life and I guess that's why everyone's here because they make a good product and people come here to get it. So let's you and I share our Bucky's barbecue sandwich and then we'll get back to the office. Good morning, I'm Bill. When I'm not moving trailers or at home building or fixing stuff, you can find me watching Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. Stay tuned. I know uh, many of you are asking about the cat. How's the cat? How's the cat? How's the cat? And for those of you who are asking, I do have some footage. He's kind of uh, cool. Um, some interesting news about the cat. One of our drivers came in and she's kind of an expert on cat, cats. And she looked real close at the kitten and determined that it was a girl. So why she knows it and the doctor didn't know it I don't know but now we're gonna presume it is a girl we're gonna name the cat the kitten um, Margie I'll tell you that later the reason why but Margie's uh, her name and I've got footage of her she is a messy eater I'm training her to eat hard food um, not not crunchy food yet, but uh, soft cat food. And but man, she just dives right in the bowl, and uh, I got some footage of that. If you like seeing more cat stuff, let me know, and uh, I might start putting it on TikTok. Uh, I don't know, so let me know. Here's some cat stuff.
I don't use that disport. This, this, 